to Soho Trent and the world. This is Six Towns Radio. So it's Six Towns Radio. We've got a very special guest on the line now. He's coming to Stoke very soon. Welcome to Boston's About Bill Wyman. Hi. You all right? Yeah, nice to be there. Oh, good man. Um, first of all, tell our listeners about um, you and the Rhythm Kings and the show that's coming to Stoke on November the 1st. Yeah, it's part of the five-week tour, uh, which we do every year, and um, looking forward to it. It's going to be good. Yeah, there's 26 gigs across the UK. Um, did you have any say in the venues that you played, Bill? No, we leave that open to the promoters. They come back to us and suggest, you know, a, a pile, and then we choose the, the ones we like the best. Okay. And the most convenient for travel, you know. So we haven't got to, to, such long journeys between because um, we travel by coach, of course. Yeah. Um, have you got any fond memories of playing in Stoke before? Because I know you've been here a few times. Yeah, we've played. The Rhythm Kings have played there, yeah. Mm. It's been very successful. And, uh, and of course, we did it with the Stones. Um, you know, the, yeah. those package tours we used to do in the 60s. Yeah. Um, this time you've got Maria Mulder as a special guest. Of course, a lot of people remember her for Midnight at the Oasis. No, she's great. I've known her 40 years. We've been friends. And I used her in a movie about 20 years ago. Um when I did a soundtrack, and um, I went to see the, her at um, Hammersmith uh, in February in London and uh, with a trio, and she was fantastic, and I just thought she'd be great to have on the tour because we always have a special guest. And I asked her, and she said, I'd be delighted, I'd be honoured, I love your band. And yeah. She's obviously been listening to the records I used to send her. <laughs> <laughs> she used to send me stuff as well, you know, so it was like a mutual thing. Yeah. So it's going to be good to have her because she's, she can only sort of add a bit of icing on the cake. Definitely, yeah. And so, you know, if you were looking, how do you become a rhythm king? <laughs> you get chosen. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, it's it, it's um, almost exactly the band I started with 12 years ago that I chose to be uh, the, the rhythm king's band for on stage. Um, over the years, there's been a few... There's been a few, um, I'm sorry, as my dogs are barking. Um, there's been a few, must be a burglar again. Um, there's been a few changes, you know, it's like a bit of a football team, you know, if someone can't make it, we re- replace them with, with someone in that position. Or if, if someone um, uh, gets, you know, gets another job and they can't get out of it, you know. So um nine times out of ten we're we're the same team and uh we've just got one different person from the beginning and that is Garrett watkins on the keyboards yeah on, pia- on piano who's um bob dylan's favorite british piano player actually so you're like the player manager then aren't you yeah kind of yeah. <laughs> i suppose you could but i never thought of it <laughs> like that yeah i i'm not your your regular leader you know i don't sort of command the stage from the front uh, on the mic or anything like that i I speak to yeah. I usually introduce the audience and then speak to the the audience a few times during the evening. Uh, but I leave most of it to Georgie Fame, who's on the organ, you know, vocalist, and he he's used to running a band and leading a band. So and he's always got great stories and and things about the songs we're doing. Yeah. And so uh, and some of the other um, band members introduce themselves when they do stuff. See, because I've got six singers, so we all do different styles of music and all that we mix it up and it's uh, it's very uh, varied and very interesting yeah you took the rhythm kings to glastonbury this year now, did you enjoy that performance yeah we th- we'd been offered that gig um uh, quite a few times in the past but we've always been on tour in europe or doing festivals or something so we were never able to do it but this year we were and it was really nice yeah we played to about four thousand people and uh, had great ovation great write-ups about us and uh, we really enjoyed it, but we did six festivals over the summer. We did a couple in France, and we did the one in Köln in Lancashire, and um, I got an award. They gave me an award. Wow, <laughs> that's always good. Yeah, Blues Legend Award. Me and Chris Farlow got an award that day, so that was kind of nice. Oh, yeah, we had Chris on this, on this tour, I'm getting another one. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what they're doing. They're sort of suddenly discovering me for awards. Yeah. No, so I'm getting a Basker Award for songwriting and com- com- compositions, you know, um, on one of the gigs. And, uh, oh, that's at the Savoy Hotel, actually. Oh, nice. And um, that's going to be nice. You yeah. know, but in... in, in uh, in Europe, they gave me a Louis Armstrong Award in Germany once, and, you know, I, they just like to, you know, 
celebrate certain moments with certain people. I don't know. So I'm just a bit lucky when it comes to me. (laughs) Well, the Stones hardly ever got any awards, so it's a bit unusual for me to receive them. (laughs) You can't knock it. No, no, because it's, it's your... You know, it's, it's the music business people that are doing it. So it's not just odd fans that like you mm. that are voting. It's, it's music business personalities and companies and people. So um, it's a bit more prestigious. So what is it about performing live that still gives you a buzz, Bill? Yeah, I wouldn't do it otherwise because I've got so many other things on my plate. You know, I, I write books and I do archaeology and I've got the restaurant and I'm raising a family of three teenage girls and uh, I'm doing photo exhibitions, et cetera, et cetera, and I'm doing charity things. So it's hard to squeeze it in, but we, I like to do it just once a year or twice a year. We usually do, you know, three or four weeks in Europe in the in the spring and then do England in the autumn. So I wouldn't do it if I didn't really enjoy it. And it's just, um, you know, it, it certainly is not a career move for me or, a, <laughs> or, or you know, a money earner because it isn't. It's so we all just get out together, you know, and uh, and have a bit of fun, really, just have a really nice time. Uh, have great audiences, get standing ovations every night, you know, uh, on calls, etc. And it's just great to get back to the hotel with a smile on our faces and say, you know, just enjoyed each other's performances because it's a brilliant band, six singers. And as I say, we do a whole variety of music from blues to jazz, so do some soul music, some early rock and roll, ballads, uh, you know, m- mix it up and it's just, it's just, unique because i don't think there's a band around that does that kind of thing no no definitely not the live show is just amazing we'll talk about that in a minute but you've met and parties with every rock star i can think of but i've heard that chuck berry is not on your list of the most sociable (laughs) i think he's not on the list of many many people (laughs) the only one you know when i was a kid i would have given my right arm to meet him yeah now I, i look back and think i'm bloody glad i didn't you know because um he is a not a nice person. I mean, he's the biggest disappointment in my life, probably. Um, whereas 95% of people in the business are fantastic, you know, wonderful people. But uh, he just has a permanent chip on his shoulder, and he, he really is very, very difficult to deal with. Yeah, I suppose some people are different often on stage. You do do one of his songs in your set, you never can tell. They do yeah, say you shouldn't meet your heroes, but <laughs> obviously he still is a hero of yours. Well, musically, as a a songwriter, yes, but as a personality, no. (laughs) Um, So, no, I I do obviously love his records because I used to write away to America to get them, you know, in the 50, 56, 57, 58, I used to write away to America and and buy them from a Chicago uh, record shop, you know, and wait a month for them to arrive, send postal orders out there, you know, (laughs) and um, (laughs) in those days... um, so, because they didn't, you know, you couldn't get his records in England. It was the only way to go. And uh, so, uh, that was it. But, I don't know. Um, we just do the one song, that's enough. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, musically still a hero. So, you mentioned your restaurant as well. How is Sticky Fingers doing? Uh, it's, it's doing brilliant. It's been 24 years now, and uh, it's still packed in the evenings, and... Uh, because the food is great and you get big portions for a reasonable price, so it's very popular, especially with young people. The burgers are, are nearly always voted the best burger in London, you know, and we've got fantastic spare ribs, and et cetera, et cetera. So it's, it's very successful. I'm so pleased because I was told when I opened it that it wouldn't last, you know. <laughs> five re- five um, restaurants have failed on this site, you know, in the last five years, and this is going to be another one. I said, oh, yeah, all right. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, have you got any plans to open any more? No, 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 because um, I, I did open briefly in Manchester and uh, Cambridge for a couple of years, but um, it didn't seem to work out there much because people weren't eating every day of the week, just on weekends mostly, so you'd be packed weekends and empty yeah. in the week, so I just let them go and stayed with the London one. Yeah. Also, I didn't, I didn't have the, I had the inconvenience of having to travel to them regularly, you know, to make sure things were going all right. That's why I've never franchised in, in other countries, which I've been asked to do, because it would mean I would have to travel all the time and, and check on them, make sure they're all right. Yeah. So I'm happy with the one. Very <laughs> successful. You seem to be able to turn your hand to anything. Um, are you a person who has trouble relaxing, Bill? No, I don't have trouble relaxing. I just, um, 
I'll relax it whenever I want to, but I just uh, love to work. So from the minute I get up in the morning after I've had my tea and a banana, I, then I, off I go, you know, and, until the evening. I, and I only stop for toilet, you know, toilet moments and uh, food. And maybe if there's something great on TV or the big football match or something like that, I'll break. But otherwise, I work on a project, whatever it might be that day that I'm working on, whether it's a book or a, a project for a TV or a charity thing or whatever it might be, a photo exhibition coming up, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So I'm busy all the time. I've got lots of things on the back burner. And um, I've never been happier. Yeah, and you collect a lot of things as well, as well as all those things you said. You've got a great yeah, collection. That's well. <laughs> <laughs> Has it become a bit overbearing? Have you run out of places to put these things you've collected over the years? No, I find places for them. <laughs> I'm not telling you where, though. <laughs> that's going to be the secret that goes with you, is it? <laughs> <laughs> Do you think you're a bit OCD with it all? Yeah, I probably am, actually. Char- Charlie is as well. Me and Charlie always were in the stones, you know. Yeah. Tidy up the other guys. Uh, dropping cigarette ends on the floor, picking them up, putting them in ashtrays and all that, you know. Uh, we were a bit like that, making door, sure doors were shut, going backwards and forwards twice to make sure instead of just walking away. Just little things, you know. I like to have things tidy on my desk, you know, and, and I have to have them uh, comfortably set up. I can't have them all over, uh, all over the place, you know. They have to be sort of tidied and in correct order and all that sort of stuff. Yeah. And all my record collections, alphabetical order, and all my books sort of, you know, all put together and subjects and things, you know. It's the way I am. Uh, it's a bit boring for some people, but I tell you, if I need anything, I know exactly where it is. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that always it's helps. a record or anything, I don't have to plough through uh, a thousand records to find the record I want. I know exactly where it is, you know. It's a system that's worked for you, Bill, all these years. Yeah, I catalogue everything, you know, from folk on my photographs as well for my photo exhibitions. I immediately can receive one, know exactly what day it was photographed, you know, where, you know, um, all the details of it instantly. And I can find that in my diaries if there's a, a question on the Rolling Stones or anything like that. I can go immediately, within five minutes, I can find out uh, from a photograph where it was taken, who took it, da 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 da, da you know. And, and that's very, very useful because it's keeping diaries and stuff. It's very useful when you're writing books and when you're doing an article or writing a uh, something, you know, like an introduction for somebody's book they've asked you to do or something like that. You can always refer to the information you've got. It's, it's like an archive. Of, it's like a like a library, if you like. Most definitely, it's a well, tough one to start off, but once you get it going, it's very easy to keep it, you know, keep it up to date. Yeah, well, it's been really interesting talking to you today, Bill, and good luck with the tour and everything else. I hope I didn't bore you to death with my OCD. <laughs> Not at all. I've got OCD really bad. Mine's uh, checking things uh, rather than well, keeping Well, I, I don't do it on stage. I don't yeah. make them stand in certain positions <laughs> tidily. <laughs> <laughs> you take care, Bill, and thank you very much. Good talking to you. Yeah, thank you.